Chapter 10. Baruch encounters some Hasidim. It was just before Pesach, and the sun had melted the snow, turning the road into a veritable bog. Baruch soon became tired as he trudged thoughtfully along. He reached a small wood, and spied a fallen tree by the side of the path, and sat down to rest. He had not been sitting very long when he heard the sound of a horse and cart approaching. The driver was a Christian peasant who hailed Baruch and invited him to step into his cart for a lift. He said there was a Jew living in the village of Yutina, not very far along the road, and Baruch would be able to spend the night there. The peasant said he was going as far as Zavkina, but could drop Baruch at the crossroads from which it was but a short distance to Yutina. Baruch asked the peasant how much he would charge him for the lift, to which the peasant replied, I never charge for such trifles. There is a rabbi living near me who says we should all help each other, irrespective of any difference in our religions. He is a great man, and everyone respects him. We do what he tells us. That is why I won't charge you now. But I never accept any service for any for nothing, said Baruch. You must take some payment for me, otherwise I cannot come in your cart. The peasant argued no more, and Baruch got into the cart and was put down at the crossroads as agreed. Baruch paid him off and felt better. The innkeeper who was a disciple of the Baal Shem Tov. As Baruch slowly continued on his way in the direction that the peasant had indicated, a young man came running towards him and greeted him, saying, Would you please come to our house? My father-in-law has asked me to intercept all who are passing along this way to warn them that they cannot proceed beyond our house, which is an inn, as the whole area is flooded. The bridge has been carried away by the flood, and unfortunately several peasants with their horses and loaded wagons who were on the bridge at the time were all lost. You see, you cannot do anything but take refuge with us, and I assure you, you are very welcome. Baruch was happy to accept the invitation, particularly as he saw at once that his companion was a learned young man. They immediately found themselves in harmony with each other and discussing Torah topics. Baruch learned that the young man's name was Natan Shlomo, that he was the son-in-law of the innkeeper whose name was Nachman Yisrael, a man of about 50. Natan Shlomo also told Baruch how his father-in-law came to establish the settlement there. Baruch was very interested. Nachman Yisrael had spent his youth studying at the most famous yeshivas of the time and earned the praise of all his teachers. He married the daughter of a well-to-do man in Zlobim, and their livelihood was provided for him for 20 years so that the young man was free to continue with his Torah studies. Nachman Yisrael became acquainted with a wandering mystic named Rabbi Yisrael Yaakov. One day, they both disappeared together without saying where they were going to. Neither did they disclose the destination or purpose of their trip on their return. Later it transpired that Rabbi Yisrael Yaakov was a disciple of the saintly Baal Shem Tov, and it was to him that he took his friend Nachman Yisrael. It was possibly the first time Baruch had heard the name Baal Shem Tov, and that he was teaching Jews a new way of life with the help of his disciples. They were the mystics who wandered through town and village, each with his particular mission. As they now had reached the inn, Natan Shlomo promised to continue his story later. Baruch found a number of visitors at the inn, all apparently stranded like himself. They were all Torah scholars and all made welcome by their host, Nachman Yisrael. They had a regular share each evening, and as the visitors proved to be scholars, they were given the honor of conducting the shear. Baruch was also invited to give a Talmudic discourse, and a lively discussion followed his expert interpretation of it. They were floodbound for three days, and during this time, Baruch became very friendly with the two sons-in-law of Nachman Yisrael who both lived with their father-in-law at the inn. They told him that their father-in-law had rented the inn and mill on the advice of the saintly Baal Shem Tov, whom he had visited together with Rabbi Israel Yaakov. 
Nachum Yisro had also persuaded some more young men to come along with him. To these he rented the fishing pool, and altogether they managed to establish this newest settlement on the estate of a nobleman. They built a base of Medrash and comprised a small but happy Jewish community of several families. The venture proved a great success, and they all attributed this success to the wonderful powers of the Baal Shem Tov. Baruch got on so well with the two sons-in-law that they begged him to stay longer. But being anxious to get to Dabra Mizla as soon as possible, he asked to be excused. As he walked along, looking for the driest spots he could find, his mind went back to his few days at the inn. Everything seemed more vivid in retrospect, and he pondered on all he had seen and heard while he was there, on the new way of life adopted by the innkeeper and his sons-in-law, and the difference in their mode of prayer. He could not have known at the time that he had been in contact with one of the first groups of the Bashemta's followers, the first Hasidim in these parts. Later, in Dabra Mizzle, Baruch was to hear more about this great personality. <laughs>